And to forgive people, that's something spiritual. Like naturally, we don't want to forgive because we don't forget. Remember Rick Ross had an album? Um, Rick Ross had an album called God Forgives, I Don't. Tupac Shakur with a nine. Machiavelli returns as God forgives and I don't. Resurrection of the real. Yeah, I see. Remember that? Remember the album title? God Forgives, I Don't. Dinner's full of hate. God forgives and I don't. Only hustlers relate. I'm just like, man, bro. That's that sound that sound blasphemous right there. Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gon' talk. Fredo, bro, uh, man, Fredo, I've seen so much maturity. Do you realize that when Fredo and NBA YoungBoy chose to squash their beef publicly yeah, a few that. months back, I remember that. Do you realize like how many lives that saved? Yes. When they chose to do that publicly, that's hard. That's stuff that. Our generation, we like, man, why Ja Rule and 50 Cent can't squash their beef? Mm -hmm. Why why Birdman and Master P can't get together? And you got two brothers in their mid-20s that chose to say, hey, we're going to put our differences to the side. You know what I mean? That's it's me. been real bloodshed behind that beef. You know what I mean? So I love that, and I, and I was proud of him, and I hit him Did personally. Did you tell him? Yeah. I told him. I said, oh, I said, I said, and you know how I told you, I don't call people legends or I don't yeah. idolize people no more. And I was like, I think I, that's exactly what I told him. I said, what you just did today was legendary. That's real. This puts you in a whole different space. Yeah, it's just a different world when you're looking, th looking at things from a spiritual eye. A there lot, you go. A lot of it is ego, too, to me. And, and, and they don't take themselves out of the flesh because when we ask, when we ask people about Master P or um, Birdman it's like well or even like Mo3 with um, before he had passed rest, is, rest with in yellow peace and trap, with yeah. yellow and trap and stuff people always say that'll never happen it was too much bloodshed that happened for them to even come back together really and I'm like, and that's that's always the same answer. It's too much bloodshed. It's too many people on that's both sides. That's just unforgiveness sides. is what you're there saying. There you go. That's that's all I'm hearing is unforgiveness. Exactly. They ain't read the Bible. They must not know how much blood was shed in the Bible. And God still used those same people who were murderers. You Paul, know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Paul who, who was formerly Saul. Saul. Come on, man. It turned them into Paul. You know what I mean? They don't see it how... David was still seen as a man after God's own heart. And David out here... Messing with Bathsheba, got Bathsheba's husband murked, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like, you ride a hit tight. Come on, man. So that's that's what happens when we apply like human knowledge and human what we call wisdom to the spiritual realm of life. Mm -hmm. Like unforgiveness is a thing that human beings, it's easy as a human to be like, nah. I ain't never forgiven that person because of what they did, if you're thinking in human terms. But when you apply spiritual wisdom to the life we live it pulls the side out of you that's not natural you know what i mean and to forgive people that's something spiritual like naturally we don't want to forgive because we don't forget remember rick ross had an album um rick ross had an album called god forgives i don't tupac shakur with a nine machiavelli returns as god forgives and i don't resurrection of the real yeah i see remember that remember the album title god forgives i don't dinner's full of hate God forgives and I don't. Only hustlers relate. I'm just like, man, bro. That's that sound. That sound blasphemous, right there. Like we, once we say that we don't forgive people, it's just like we basically saying we're not willing to grow. No, but unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is something that um, the human generation. I call it ego unforgiveness. I always talk to people about that. I always say, you know, our lives is not our own. And uh, when I say that, meaning like situations that we go through, it's not always because of, okay, so I was saying that, you know, in life, and I, I say this all the time, how I look on life, I look on life like when you're born, God clock you in at this job called life. Life. And you have, every, each person have a job to do. We might not know exactly what our job is, but when your job is done, he clocks you out. And when I tell some people this, they're like, but a baby who was just born and died right then and there, I said, that baby's job might have been to touch the nurse mm. that witnessed it or mm. whoever is around the mama, the daddy who saw this person pregnant for all these nine months and mm. going through all these different changes. That person could have been on drugs and stopped taking wow. drugs because of that child. We don't know. That child finished their job, so God took that child. Wow. Because they touched whoever they're supposed to touch and change it. That's why in life... I always say, like, live your life to the best you can because 
whoever you touch might not always come to you and say, thank you so much, you changed my life. Yeah. But because of you, somebody who's watching your life changed it. And then now we're in a, in a generation where everything is on social media, being recorded, whatever. You can touch so much more by just being true to what we believe in. Yo, that, that makes so much sense. I see why you married her, bro. Yeah, well, you know, I am. I, I did what God gave me the ability to do. I was a changed <laughs> man, and I, I needed to do it. I married her in four months when I met her, and we've been together for 20 years. Man. I walk by faith, not by sight. There you go. I, I, I get it, because what you just said, that is so real. Because a lot of times when you try to talk to people about God, they, they look for, like, the most extreme example of something to go against what you're trying to tell them. Oh, man, God has a purpose for all of our lives. And they, their first thing they'll say will be, well, what about a baby that died when they're mm -hmm. three months old? Well, da, da, da. And I love that response because mm -hmm. that takes wisdom to know that God can God can indirectly bless people. Even use babes. Yeah, e even even through a non-traditional way, even through even through death. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the the process mm -hmm. of that baby being born, the process mm -hmm. of that mother being pregnant could have been a blessing to other people. Exactly. And and and, and we don't know who it is we that we need know. to be touching, but we have a job to touch each other. Oh yeah, in wow. some way or form. You know, Instagram made it to where everybody want they want to get their flowers right now. Like they want to see it. They want to be like, oh, if I if I ever blessed you, I need to see it and document it and be able to post it on my page. But like you said, a lot of the people who I learned that by doing music because I'm like, I got so many millions of streams on my music, but I could never meet all these millions of people in life. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn to be okay with hey. What you choosing to put on this album, D1, this is going to reach people that you will never see in person. But you should love those people and, and appreciate the fact that you got their attention span for while they're listening to your music and handle that with care, bro. Mm -hmm. Don't be don't be negligent with the opportunity to to change their life and don't don't fumble that opportunity to really like, you know, sow some seeds of wisdom and godliness into them. Like what I've been through, amen. When I ain't have outside money, I stayed in. Wow. Um, David and Goliath was your first album? It was. What was uh what um what what possessed you to, to do that? Was it because your name is David and because you read up on David and, and not just Bathsheba, but the fact that he was uh a Rudy boy. Mm. He was you know what I mean, he was young and he was the one that they least expected. It was more it was more that one, underdog, you know, yeah. underdog mentality. Me getting into the rap game at the time, everybody telling me, Bro, you you're not gonna make it trying to go against the grain, bro. The people that's popping in our state right now is Lil Wayne, Kevin Gates, Boosie, you know, this is this is what they wanna hear. You trying to be so different, you ain't gonna make it like that. That that didn't make me change. That made me go twice as hard. I felt like the underdog, like David. So I said, David and Goliath. This whole industry is Goliath, you heard me? But I know what my slingshot is. My slingshot is this microphone. I know that with this microphone, when I use this for the purpose God designed it, I'm going to be able to slay this Goliath. Wow. Here we are. That's huge. I, I wanted to ask you about... Uh Dr. Boyce was it that, oh, that Dr. Boyce Watkins? Yeah, yeah, Watkins. What what uh when when I say that name what comes to mind? OG mentor, a brother who took me in and gave me the cosign that I was running behind so many rappers trying to get. You know, mm -hmm. I was driving state to state trying to get TI to cosign me, trying to trying to get Wayne to cosign me, trying to get Ludacris to cosign me. Um Man, I just gave my CD out to so many people. You know, I was that dude giving my CD to Jermaine Dupree, BG, Birdman, like like all these all these people, right? Meanwhile, Dr. Boyce Watkins, never even met him in person, but brother ended up hitting me up on the internet one day. Brother, you are a lyrical genius. My D1, man, you amazing. Can I interview you? And and I want to put you on my platform. And, you know, I want to I wanna turn all my people on to you. Me seeing somebody embrace me like that, come on, what else I'm gonna do but say, man, bro, you got you got my friendship, you got my loyalty, bro. Thank you for this. And when you got people that's co-signing you like a Boyce Watkins, brother named the Hip Hop Doc, he's a doctor in Baton Rouge, a doctor, right? Who me and him did some work together where we would go around to different schools and I would I would write these raps for us where we were rapping about like exercising and eating healthy and stroke and, and heart disease and just things to teach you about, you know, healthy uh, lifestyles. Mm -hmm. He was a big co-sign of mine. I realized, like, man, God really got 
a different path for me. My cosigns, the people that's willing to put their arm around me and open doors for me, it's not the rappers I grew up idolizing. You know what I mean? So when you talk to me about legends, you know, I'm not going to be naming rappers as legends. I'm going to name people as legends who are A, successful in what they're doing, but B, the way that they're doing what they're doing is what's making them legendary. Because it's like, you're doing stuff that's positive for the community. You're doing stuff that God will be proud of, and you're successful at it. That's legendary to me. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.